Now, there's, there's a common question that occurs with this technique. Some of you guys have asked me, is he throws his kick and I block. A lot of people think that you're, you're going to run into a great deal of difficulty moving in for this follow-up before he counterattacks. And to be honest, you're, you're right. There is some issue there. So let's try to resolve that a little. First, let's try to understand in the ideal phase of the technique the principles that are at play that are designed to help us deal with that. So the first concept you need to understand, we already addressed it. When he throws his kick, this is a deflecting block. I'm not blocking him sideways. Okay, if he kicks and I block sideways, that's going to be a much larger impact that I'm dealing with and it can orbit him into a follow-up movement. Now, if you use your deflecting block correctly, as I move out of range, there's some frictional pull there that's going to help elongate his base. Now, that elongated base, well, that's going to buy you a fraction of a second or so. He's not going to be able to move as easily. Uh, and then, of course, as I move in, I'm checking off this arm because that's, that's his most likely follow-up movement. There's one other thing that's at play, one other principle that you can use. And this has more to do with my, my footwork and movement and my structure. The first principle is all about manipulating your opponent's structure. Now we're going to look at how we can sort of manipulate what's going on with our structure to enhance our timing. So what is it? As I move back, I can use the ground reaction force. I can use the ground as a springboard to catapult me into that next movement. Now, even, as I said, there is a problem with timing here, even with those two principles at hand. But let's look at, again, what's going on. There's an alternative. It's already built within the structure of this technique. If I've elongated his base, that means his next most likely weapon that he's going to use as he sees me coming in is this arm. For him to try to turn and come at me with this other arm is going to take more time. So I'm going to check this off as I move in. I hug. Then we have our kick. Now, of course, just stay where you are. So if, if we're in this position again, come up though. Uh, if I'm moving in, you might say, well, he could also turn this way. That's fine. Alter your check. Okay, now if I see him starting to orbit into me, turn this way, I'm going to check this side, and then I can continue with the technique again. But let's look at what if he does engage this, this arm. Because again, this is his most likely weapon. He sees me moving in. If his structure has sort of been uh, taken away from him, his base has been elongated, this weapon's coming at me, we have a block. That's why we're checking this. And now as you're blocking this, so go ahead and strike, as you're blocking this, this hugging action is a strike that you can use to distract him a little bit more. Why check and hug your body and move into this kick? This movement is already there. Take advantage of it use it okay so now what i want you guys to do is get back with your partners throw your kick and practice it throw that strike okay this could be a punch or a back fist and move in engage against this arm and activate your hugging action as a weapon use it to your advantage practice it with all of those factors uh, at play and see if you like it a little bit more. It might make a little bit more sense. But again, keep in mind, those answers are already there. They were already built into the ideal phase of the technique. I'm just bringing them to light.